morning boys and girls, welcome to SGBC Children's Worship. Now in the flash of the eye is already the first week of September and I would like to welcome you guys to come and join us for, for worship. Even though we cannot go back to worship together yet, but we can still worship every week um, through YouTube and through your TV and through your computer. And it's such a blessing that we can um, join and worship this way. So this morning, I hope that you guys are ready for worship. Now, this morning, we're going to sing some really fun action songs. So um, if you want to uh, stand up and dance with me, feel free to do so, because these songs are fun to dance with, okay? So before we start, let's bow our head and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that we can come together and worship you. We can come together to sing song and praise you. We can come together to say thank to you. And we can come together to listen to your words and learn lessons that you want us to learn in our life. God, help us this morning that we can join together, concentrate and worship you. May your name be praised. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So the first song I'd like to sing with you is a song that I learned when I was maybe in grade one or grade two. Um, and it's a fun song to sing um, because it's talk about how God continued to give us um, energy, continue to give us strength to go through every day so that we can have joy and we can have love in our heart. So this song is called uh, Give Me Oil In My Lamb. If you want to do actions, every time I say, you know, um, give me oil in my lamb, you can do that. And if I sing, sing Hosanna, you can wave your hands up, okay? So let's sing this song together, okay? Ready? times because the words really it's really really meaningful that we can praise God with strength with joy and with love okay now remember we were talking about the story of Moses for the past couple of weeks and this song just comes into my mind because it's totally talk about the whole Moses story 
And this song is also a really fun song to sing. It's called Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh, remember, is the bad king, okay? So this song talk about, you know, how Moses and um, God helped Moses to lead the people out of Egypt, okay? So it's called Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Ready! and excited that we have um, invited Uncle Terrence to come share God's worth with us. And it's his first time since the quarantine, so I bet you haven't seen him for a long time. So let us give, give a big hand to welcome Uncle Terrence to share God's words with us this morning. Hi, boys and girls. How is everyone doing? How was your five-month summer vacation? I think probably more than five months too. Miss seeing your friends again? Excited to go back to school on Tuesday? I wonder how it's going to look like going back to school. Perhaps meeting your friends and teachers in person again. Did you wake up on time and get ready? Or perhaps you may choose to have to school online. For the past couple of months, we have looked into the book of Genesis and Exodus. We dive into the life of Abraham. How his faith was tested by God asking him to sacrifice Isaac. The Bible describes Isaac as Abraham's only son and the one he loves. But from the man's perspective, if Abraham sacrificed Isaac, how can God's promises to Abraham be fulfilled? Do you remember what are the God's promises to Abraham? The Bible tells us that God told Abraham that he will be a father of many nations and kings will come from him. God will make his name great, and he will become a blessing to others. And his children will be as much as dust on the earth. I'm not sure what Abraham was thinking when God asked him to sacrifice Isaac. We just know that he did exactly what God, what God asked him to do. In other words, he obeyed. Then, as you know, Isaac did not die. He then had his family, having two sons, Esau and Jacob. And you know what happened to Jacob? He cheated his dad, using tricks 
to get the birthright from Esau. Then run away to his uncle, Laban. Then cheated by him, heading back to see Esau, wrestling with God. Finally, he had a fa big family with 12 sons. He also talked about the issues within his family. His second youngest son, and you know who? It's Joseph, was sold to Egypt as a slave when he was about 17. Going through lots of tough time, but the Lord was with him. And finally, he became the person in charge of Egypt when he was about 40. Then he moved his father and brother's family to Egypt to live with him. Then, many, many years later, Joseph passed away too. And the Israelites were going in number, and Pharaoh was very, very concerned. So Pharaoh started treating the Israelites like bad, making them to do very hard work, and giving them a miserable life. In the Bible, it says, They made lives bitter with hard labor in brick and mortar, and with all kind of work in the fields. And the Egyptians used them ruthlessly. So what did the Israelites do? They cried out to God, and then God sent Moses and Aaron to bring them out of Egypt. Hmm. Do you think Daryl wants to let the Israelites go? Of course not. If they leave, who are going to do those hard labor work? In the Bible, God said, he will do miraculous signs and wonders in Egypt, and Pharaoh will not listen. Then he will lay his hand on Egypt with mighty acts of judgment, and finally to bring his people out of Egypt. So God uses nine plagues, blood, frogs, nets, flies, livestock, boils, hail, locusts, and darkness to attack Egypt. And Pharaoh told Moses that if God would make the go away, he would let his people go. But after God made each of the plagues go away, Pharaoh changed his mind and refused to let the people go. So now what happened? God says to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and Egypt. After that, he will let you all go. And this is the plague on the firstborn. Do you know what this plague is about? In Exodus 11, 4-6, it says, This is what the Lord says, About midnight, I will go throughout Egypt. Every firstborn son in Egypt will die. From the firstborn son of Pharaoh, who sits on the throne, to the firstborn son of the female slave, who is at her handmill, and all the firstborn of the cattle as well. There will be loud wailing throughout Egypt, worse than there has ever been or ever will be again. Wow! So this plague is only to Egyptians though, not Israelites. So how does the Lord know which households are Israelites? The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Tell all Israelites, on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. The lamb could be either a sheep or a goat, but it must be a male, one year old, and has no defects. And on the fourteenth day, Eat the lamb by roasting it over the fire. Take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the house. Then at about midnight, the Lord will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals. But the Lord will pass over those houses with lamb's blood on the door frames. And finally, Pharaoh led the Pharaoh Israelites go. Well, it may be hard to understand why God did this, but remember, God had given Pharaoh and the Egyptians many opportunities to do what he told them to do, but they refused. 
Well, whether this is the first time you heard of this story, there are three things I would like you to pay attention to. Number one, God has a unique way to save his people. The lamb's blood needs to be put on the sides and tops of the door frames. Not like this. How about that? How about this? No, these are not the ways. Number two, it is the blood at the door frames that separate God's people from others. God sees the Israelites different from the others because of the blood. It is this sign that keep the Israelites from having the firstborn die. Number three, for those who receive Jesus as the personal Lord and Savior, God sees them through the cross and the blood of Jesus. They will not face the wrath or anger of God, which will lead to separation from God forever. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for giving us your beloved son Jesus to die on the cross for all the wrong things that we have done. While we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. That is how you show your love to us. Father, we know that some of the things we do are not pleasing to you. We are thankful for Jesus who set us free from our sins. In him, we are forgiven. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, nice to see you all and wish you have a great first week of school and see you later. Thank you, Uncle Terence, for sharing such a wonderful story about Passover with us. And remember um, when the Israelite put the uh, blood of the lamb on their door frame, um, God passes, the angel of that passes over them and they, the, the firstborn didn't get killed. And Jesus sacrifices his own blood so that we can reconcile, we can be back together with God again. So this is really amazing what God has done for us. So um, let us do the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, boys and girls, I know a lot of you are going back to school next week. So I would definitely pray that God will keep you safe, even though this is a little bit different from before. But I'm pretty sure that God has a plan for us to go back as well. So, boys and girls... I hope you enjoy going back to school and being together with your friends and learning and uh, seeing your teachers and start learning again. Remember to wear your mask. Remember to always wash your hands. Remember to always pray and ask God for his protection. And maybe through this, you can share gospel with your friends as well. Okay, I'll see you next week. Goodbye.